Hey guys, Josh here from Mad Charcoal. Today I'm going to be drawing a lion um, with charcoal. Let's start off with a piece of willow charcoal and a sharpening paddle. And instead of actually just sharpening the oh, it broke the willow charcoal, I'm going to use this extra charcoal here that's collecting on top while I file it down to create a base for the char for the charcoal to sit while I make the lion. So here we go. <laughs> a little dusty. There we go. I like that. It looks good. It's a little high, but it will move down in this area. So happy with that. Some willow charcoal on there. It's got a nice uh a nice area to work on. I'm going to now line it up with this pan pastel. Um, it's a little torn up, but it's okay. Um, it's good enough for using. Well, maybe I'm gonna change it. I'll change it out. So this one's it's ripping here. You can see that right there. It's tearing and it's all worn out. So I'm gonna pull that one off. Swap out the soft cover for it. This is called pan pastel and a soft palette knife. Very useful, very useful material. I'm actually one of their featured artists on the website. If you like that, uh, panpastel.com. Okay. And I sell these drawing kits with all the material I work with, or most of them, like the main material that I work with, on my website, madtrackle.com slash shop. Let's get started. I'm gonna line it up. It's gonna be like very central very centralized drawing of a line. I'm trying to get my proportions out there. I'm trying to get an idea of where everything's gonna be. Looks like this side's gonna be a lot more in shadow than the other side, but before we kind of focus on that, we're going to establish the dark, the darkest um, landmarks that I'm gonna be working with, which are the eyes, the nose, looks like the mouth as well. Um, these will establish where everything else goes a lot easier by figuring that out. And then I can build up on that and layer on that. So I'm working with values and with proportions at the same time. Utilizing this edge of that, this uh, pen pastel too. Really bring out some of these tones, and I'm loading different amounts of pastel on this uh, palette knife to create different depths of darkness and lightness. Sweet, and I'm squinting at my reference as much as I can. You can see my reference, right? Yeah, cool. Squinting at it while working. So that I'm not too concerned in the details yet. I'll be concerned with the details later on. Once I got all everything else more established, then I'll worry about the details. Starting to take shape a little bit more. Once I could be a little bit more decisive in my mark making, get a little darker with the material. And, but I want to still stay loose. I don't want to get too tight right away. That might compromise the style and look of the drawing that I'm going for. This is a little too hard over here. Too harsh, too hard edges. The line, I want it to come out a little bit more too. I'm going to use this paper towel now. A little further out there with this material. Blend some of this. Sweet. There's a lot of extra down here. I'll just wipe that up. That's all right. Cool. I like my drawings to be nice and messy. I feel like it adds character. Some people don't really think so, but I like it, so I'm gonna do it. Taking a kneaded eraser. Bending it around and cleaning it while I work with it. Just 
still squinting while I look at my reference because we are in the beginning stages of the drawing. This is my favorite part though with the new eraser. It really like brings out the life of the piece. Pulling those light areas back out. We're starting to see a little bit of a form start to appear. Make <clears throat> some more light in this area. This is very light down here. So we can make that happen. The illusion of hair is best applied when the large masses of it have the correct value and proportion, not each strand. So you have to work from big to small. That's something I tell everyone that I teach. When I'm teaching, I'm not always teaching, but when I am teaching. Establishing more lights. You just push and pull as you work. And that takes up the majority of the time, pushing and pulling. All right, let's see here. I want to use, I would like to use a piece of compressed charcoal, a chunk of it that might be beneficial. I'll try this one, it's from a thicker piece. It's just General's compressed charcoal. Let's see what we can do out of it. It looks a little bit rugged, a little bit textured, and I don't really want to keep all this texture. So I'm gonna come in and blend it out after I apply some of it. But I do like a little bit of the chaos. Let's see what we can make with that. I found that if I work a little bit too slowly that I start to lose some of the life of the piece. And I wanna make sure that I keep it expressive and fast and have momentum and fluidity in the work. So I can make sure of that by working fast, not being too specific, but still being thoughtful and kind of getting in the zone while I work, which doesn't always happen, but that's the goal. Grip on this kind of a little small charcoal. Okay, but I'm starting to get nice forms with the overlapping lines. It's still a bit too, I'm gonna to pull out the blending stump now, it's a bit too textured. Very dirty blending stump. Actually, I'm gonna use a more new one. That one seems like it's falling apart a little bit. I have a mad charcoal stamp on there. <laughs> Just a large blending stump. But I'm not going to just be too random with this. I want to look at my reference, see where the darks kind of flow in and make sure that I add that in there. Okay. 
I can always come out and pop out some highlights, so I'm being very generous with this. I'm drawing on Strathmore 400 series drawing paper. It's 18 by 24. I like this size because it's a, it's a large size, but it's not too big to actually not fit on like a, like a large drawing board. And a nice size to frame because anything bigger than this could get really tricky to frame in terms of finding a nice enough frame or, or just the integrity of the paper might be lost if something's a little too big, but it's okay. Okay, I need to get a new chair, it's a little squeaky, sorry about that. We're working on it, my wife and I. So I'm back here popping out more highlights as we work. A little bit more hair out here. Lights hidden. I still have some underlying highlights that I can kind of make out that I will use. Pop them back out, the ones that I lost, but it's okay if we lost some of them. I'll pop them back out. Just subtle subtlety works best here. Don't go too crazy with it. You'll lose your and if you go too bright with your highlights, you'll lose your your sense of form. <clears throat> Make sure to pull out the darkness of the mouth a little further. I'll do that in a bit. And I appreciate you guys watching as I draw. I'm trying to be kind of quick with it. I don't want to spend too make this video way too long, but um, let me know if there's something that you guys want me to draw next. Um, I usually like to do portraits of people. I usually don't do many characters. A lot of people are like, draw this enemy person or this enemy person. And I'm like, well, you should find an anime artist to do that for you if that's what you're looking for. But um, I've tried it out. It's fun. But I like to do, sometimes I like to do animals, but I haven't drawn that many animals. I like to do lines, but drawing lines is fun. There's so much fur and hair that you need to imply exists on the form without getting a little too detailed and losing the whole form. It's a good challenge, but I think this is starting to need some more darkness coming this way. There we go. That's a little better. Blend that back out. Whisker area here is darker. Let me apply some of that. I don't want to get too detail detailed though. It'll look off if that part's very detailed and the rest of the drawing is really expressive. Let's see here. Don't 
There's some more dark from the details. <laughs> A little darker here, a little darker in there. It's really starting to form now. Maybe a few more details, but I think we're pretty much there now. Don't mind those sounds, it's just my, my friend Christian walking in the room beside me. So I'm gonna cut the video off here, guys. But thanks for watching. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this process. And I'll work on it just a little bit more with the details, but that's the boring part. And um, that's kind of how I go about drawing a lion portrait. So my name is Josh. Appreciate you guys check out my work if you'd like at madcharcoal.com slash shop. And uh, go ahead and follow on Instagram if you guys want daily drawings to be to see, and TikTok if you guys want to see the process videos. Well, I'll see you guys later.